everyone, Paul here. Today I'm going to be talking about a strategy that works really well. Um, now this strategy, I don't know if it will work when there's big events and things and news and the things that come out. Uh, it may be very volatile, but when there's not these like important meetings like FOMC meetings and CPI data reports and things like that, it, it might affect it during those times. The, it's probably the most volatile during these times. But I'm going to use, uh, I'm generally talking about when these events are not happening and how to use this formula. And I've talked about it on my channel before, but I think it's the, uh, it's the strongest uh, strategy that I have because we're talking about the, the 9, the 90, and the 95. And usually the the whole point of the strategy is to find the moments when it's crossing. So when and to do it on longer time frames. And when you find this, um, it's it's usually at a moment because the nine and the ninety. It's it's usually at a moment when it's doing a huge uh, shift in direction. So if if you find the cross, it's going to be a huge shift in direction. So uh, at that moment of the cross, it's going to be very volatile. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the strategy. Uh, when the 9 and the 90, 95 cross, it's usually a big volatile moment. So that's what you look for. Uh, it's it's volatile at that point, but if you can hold it and uh, hold it to a longer trade, it usually leads to pretty good. I only do this on a longer time frames. I don't do this on... Uh, I'll do it on a look at the day. Uh, a longer time frames to look at the week the day uh, even the 12 hour now i like doing i like looking at the 12 hour because the 12 hour uh, well the 12 hour basically gives you it gives you you know two of those candles or one day so it gives you really give uh, it gives you a better look on that but i i do longer time frames to do the week the day uh, the 12 hour the six hour even like the four hour and the lowest point i'll go is either the one hour or the 30 minutes. So those are the, those are what I look for. I, I look for it in the longest time frame, and then I, if I don't see the cross, uh, I'll look go down and I'll go down to in the next time frame. So if I don't see it on the hour, then I just wait uh, for this to happen. But I'll show you how to set it up. It's real easy. Uh, you don't need. Uh, you just need the moving averages of 9, 90, 95. Talked about it before on my channel. And uh, you could have some other indicators there, but today I'm just going to teach you guys how to do it without and just look at these lines. Uh, we're going to start with the higher time frames and go all the way down. Okay, so like I said, you can use um, uh, you can use other indicators here, but the point of this video is I'm going to show you guys how to do it, where all you really need to look for is using the 990.95 and you know you know use you could use some of the other suggestion indicators i have on this channel but right now i'm just going to show you guys how to use this with just the 990.95 so what this does is uh what you want to look for is crosses basically and you want to uh you you want to make sure you don't hit any areas that are in consolidation so the only disadvantage to the strategy is occasionally you may when it crosses you might enter a zone where it might be consolidating so uh, that's kind of the the pros and cons of this is if you enter trade you might enter a, a consolidation zone so there are there are other ways to find out if you're in a consolidation zone I, I have consolidation zone right here it helps identify if you're actually in a you know, consolidation zone. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to, uh, I'm going to turn that off right now. We'll, we'll, we'll come into it later, but right now I basically have the 990.95, you know, I basically have Ghost Marker Pro, which is a paid indicator. I don't use all these. I mean, I can turn it off if I want to, but that's Ghost Marker Pro. Uh, basically, you get the Ghost Marker Pro swing, and then you get to the last two, which is 90.95. That's basically what it is. And if you don't want to get Ghost Marker Pro, you basically just go over here to your your CM 
your CME EMA trim bars and you're going to put in 90, 95 and you're also going to put in 9. So if you don't want Ghost Market Pro, which I, I recommend them, they are, they're pretty good, they're underrated in my opinion. They got a lot of good uh, indicators. But anyway, the, you, you go to CMEMA trend bars and you're, you're going to put in 9.90.95. And that it's going to look like this. So basically what you want to do is you want to go to your longer time frame. You want to do this at you know the longest possible here. And what you want to be doing is you want to be looking at an asset on the longest time frame. And you want to be checking for crosses, basically. And once you find a cross, that's basically when you enter. And uh, some of the times you'll enter a consolidation zone. Sometimes you won't. But it'll, if you're not in a consolidation zone, it usually will ride out to uh, a pretty good move. You know, you, you, know you, you might enter a consolidation zone. And we see a couple of them. We could turn a consolidation zone on. We'll see it. You see that happen kind of. Where we are right now with Bitcoin and right down here. And, you know, there's a couple of consolidation zones and you want to look out for. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the highest time frame. Uh, first thing we'll here, we'll look at the weekly. And what you do is you basically enter when it crosses. Now we see there are some moments right here where it's consolidating. So what you want to do is basically you want to look for moments where it crosses. So... The longer you go out in the time frame, the better you're going to be with this strategy. But the longer you go out in the time frame, the longer you're going to have to wait. Like doing it here on the weekly, you would have to wait a very long time. If you caught this, if you caught this, then you'd be good. But if you didn't catch this, you go down to the next time frame. So we would go to the day. We would go to the day that would be the next one. So what would you want to look for on the day? And you basically want to get a good sense of what, what the overall direction is doing because you really don't want to be doing this uh, against the trend. You can. It can lead to some results, but I always try to go with the trend because you'll get better results. But anyway, if you don't find it on the weekly, you definitely want to go to the next time frame, which I recommend doing. It's the, it's the day. And we find that that moment when it crossed was right here. So you could have rubbed that out from here, and you could have made a lot here. So let's see right here. So across right here, you could have rode it out from here all the way up to here. Now, one thing I want to uh, take a note of here, and I'm going to show you with the day chart, is most of the time when it crosses, the moment where it crosses, like I said, it's going to be a high volatility moment, and in that moment of the cross, there's going to be a lot of volatile. It's going to be very volatile at that moment. So when it does cross, you could draw a line. And most of the time, you'll realize that it won't return back to this line. If you're in a good trade, if you're in a good trade, it's not going to return back to this line. If you're in a consolidation, it's going to be short-lived and it won't go that far, but you'll you'll be in a consolidation zone. But you'll notice if you're in a good trade, it will never return back to that point of crossing, which is why you, you, I, I focus on doing longer time frames, because doing it on longer time frames, you're more likely to get the better the better crosses here, and you know the you'll get more of the uh, more of the bigger returns when you focus on long term. So like I said, if you focus on the cross like right here, right here you focus on the cross and it never has returned back to this point. And if we look back and see some other points where it crossed. Now to make this easier, you can kind of, you make it easier, you can kind of hide the candles and you can kind of visually see this. Uh, cross right here never has returned back to the, this point. And this is on the day chart. And we zoom in a little bit more. It crossed right here. And if you notice, if you draw a line, it, it hasn't returned back to this cross point. It's right here. 
up until right about here. So you could have got out. You could have got out. But that was more of a consolidation period. It, it was short-lived. A lot of these are, it could be short-lived. A lot of these could be a really big trade. So you got to keep that in mind. So another cross would have been right here. If you draw a line, you'll notice that most of the time it doesn't return back to that line for a while. And see the cross there? It hasn't returned back. It's been nothing but profit. So I'll show this on Bitcoin, but I also want to show this on a couple other assets. So we see right here that it crossed down on the day. And this was a big, You, if you come in at this point right here where it crosses, you'll notice that it didn't return back to here for a while. Anyway, so cross right here, and it didn't return back here for till up here. So all this could have been a good short uh, right here. If you rode this out from the cross, now the, the point of the cross is going to be very volatile. So right here to here would have been a good, a very good run for short. So let's just do this a couple more times. Uh, we did this on the weekly. We did this on the uh, weekly. We did this on the day. The next one we're going to be looking at is, well, we do the 12 hour because 12 hour is pretty new to me. Uh, but I like doing it because, you know, two candles or, you know, two 12 hour candles are make, basically make up a day. So you get some pretty good data from that. And uh, if you don't want to wait on the day candle. But you can also see some crosses. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to be going from the weekly, if you see a cross, good. If you find a cross on the weekly, very good. You know, you, you'll probably lead to some pretty good gains. Then you go to the day, then the 12-hour. That's what we're on right now. And we see a cross right here. So that, that will lead into some gains. Like these are 12-hour candles, so two of these candles represent a day. So if you came in right here, wrote it out, you would still be in profit. Do we see any other crosses? We see it crossing down right here, so this would have been some good profit. And uh, like I said, most of the time, it does not return back to the point of cross if you're in a good trade. Just keep that in mind. If you're in a good trade, the lines will not return back to the point of cross. If you're, if you're not in a good trade, it's going to be consolidation. So you just Keep your mind up for that. Uh, so you see right here that it cross. I could draw a line here. And you see that it didn't return back until up here. So you uh, basically all the way down here, you could be in profit. Even up here, you could still be in profit. So works really well. Let's look at a couple more. Yeah, well, let's look at a couple more. Now, there's a situation like this is a consolidation zone, so it cross. You know, you could have come in for a little bit, but you know, it, this is a consolidation area, and you see it cross right here. This is another consolidation. So there might be a little a couple trades that are you know consolidation. Let's look at look at this moment right here. We see that it crossed on the 12 hour and we see that it hasn't returned back to this point yet. So that's the 12 hour. So basically you looked on the weekly, you looked on the uh, you looked on the day, you looked on the 12 hour. The next one we want to look at is the six hour. The six hours are a real good one to find the, the overall trend and what it's doing. And Basically, you can find some a lot of good ones here. Like you see a cross right here, and basically you see that it hasn't touched this point in a very long time. So that that would have been a very good trade. Now I would also get a good idea of what the overall trend is doing. I would focus on the overall trend. I would never go against the trend, so if I see it crossing in like the opposite direction, I know it's going a certain direction. 
Uh, I probably won't do it against the trend. You're more likely to get better results when you're going with the trend. So just keep that in mind and find uh, find what the overall direction is doing before you do this. Like these moments right here, this is probably going against the trend, but it still would have been some pretty good results here. So anyway, that is the six hour, and then the the last one I probably would do would be the hour. I will be doing the hour for more of daily results. So you see across, you know, I would do the hour for, you know, if you won't want more long-term, like the hours, the shortest I'll do it to get like daily. You, you probably won't get this daily, but you'll get them pretty often, maybe once or twice a week if you're lucky. But you see across here, that would lead to some good results. If you draw a line, You'll see that it hasn't touched that line since for a while. Uh, you'll enter, here's a cross right here where you would, you, you would be good for a couple of hours before it starts coming back down. And I'd focus on an uptrend right here. Crosses right here. And it didn't, hasn't touched this for a while. Now it crossed down here, so now, I wouldn't have done this, but it still would have led, led into spirit. It's up to you if you wanted to go with the trend or not. See a moment right here, and it crosses. It hasn't returned to that for a while. So anyway, that that's kind of the formula. Now, real quickly, I want to run you by... Uh, we'll look at... We could look at SPY real quickly, and we'll see how you can work this with SPY. Now, SPY is a little bit differently. Let's go to the weekly. I'll show you how to do this with SPY, but you know, you know, with SPY, you basically have to buy contracts, so it won't it won't work as well, but it, it will lead you into some some good moments in that moment, so you can get out of your trade as soon as you see a cross, you can get out of that trade. You don't have to ride out for a long time, but you, it at least recommended for me to find it in the longer time frames. So, like for SPY right here. For SPY, you see it crossing right here, so you see that it has not touched this since then. So what you could have done at this moment, what you could have done at this moment is come in right here, write it out. Well, you could do like a week. You could do a contract for 14 days and you'd still be pretty good. You can't write the whole thing out, but because... Uh, you know, with SPY, you have to buy the contract, so it's important to find all the good moments. So, crosses right here. You can ride this out for 14 days, maybe. You can find your contract for 14 days. You still would have made $1,000. You can't ride the whole thing out unless you have the contract for it, but if it helps you find the moments. Uh, right here, you see, is it crossing down? Uh, that's a consolidation zone. Like, I know personally that this is, this right here was the start of it going in a bullish run. So you see a bunch of consolidation. And then right here, you see a cross. And from the point of it crossing right here on the weekly, it has not returned to this for a, this moment. So you can find it right here, but you know if you're doing it on Robinhood where you've got to find the contracts, you can only do this maybe for a week or two. But it really helps you out. 14 days right there. So you could do this. Uh, you could trade this on, um, on Forex with SPX, and you don't have to worry about the contracts, but this will help highlight those moments of when you need to get in and when you need to get out. So uh, let's real quickly look at the shorter time frame. We're going to look at the day. Look at all the moments where it crosses. Okay, so what you want to wait for here is you... Personally, I would wait for it to go up, come down a bit and come back up because the overall trend's going up. So right now, I would wait for it to come down and then come back up. So right about... Here would have been the moment, this would have been a real great moment, because if you realize if you draw a line, that it has not come back to that moment. So, 
I would focus on all the moments where it goes up. That's personal. You see it crossing right here. And then you could be riding all this out, and it would be leading into some pretty good results. That's 33 days. But you get the idea. We go down in the time frames to get more of an accurate result. Here's the 12 hour. If we see anything crossing, right here would have been a good moment. Uh, let's see. And right here would have been a good moment. So let's look at the next one, which is the six hour. And we see a crossing right here. This would have been a good moment. It hasn't returned back to that. And it crossed right here. It hasn't returned back to that moment. So you can outline some really good moments. Let's look at the, the hour. We'll do it on the hour. You see a crossing right here. This would have led to some good results because it has not crossed yet. And you see a crossing right here. It has not returned back to this moment. And let's see another one. Is it kind of crossing here? Well, that's not really crossing. And let's see, when's the next cross? It crosses right here. If you draw a line. If you draw a line, you'll see that it uh, has not crossed. So this works really well. So anyway, the point of the strategy is to put in the 9, 90, 95 and focus on the longer time frames first and find the moments where they cross. And uh, it usually will lead you to some pretty good results. It will only not work when you're when you enter into a consolidation. But the longer you go in the time frames, the less likely you are to hit a consolidation zone. That's why I, I, I suggest starting out with the weekly, see if it's crossing on the weekly. Uh, it's going to be a while, but then go to, after that, go to the day, look for it on the day. If you don't find it on the day, do it on the uh, 12 hour, and if you don't find it on the 12 hour, go to the 6 hour. If you don't find it on the 6 hour, then do it on the hour. The hour is the last time frame that I'll focus on, because anything other than that is going to lead into scalps, and uh, it's just you... It goes up and down more. You'll find more of the patterns by doing it on the longer time frames. So anyway, uh, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. See you guys in future videos.